Ruby. So with just six days to go before the New Hampshire primary, what's Rubio's strategy? Does he, can he shake up the Republican race? Here to answer that, the man himself, 2016 GOP presidential candidate, Senator Marco Rubio. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Thanks, Sean. All right, let, let's start with your take on how you feel about Iowa. A lot of people, uh, look, Iowa polls have, have been historically awful. They had you at 15%. You came in at 23%. Uh, a lot of, uh, obviously a strong showing. What are your thoughts about how Iowa went? Well, we were very satisfied. We worked very hard there. Obviously, we knew that we weren't the front runner. Uh, I know Ted Cruz has spent a lot of money and time in Iowa, and, and I congratulate him on his win. But uh, we knew we had an uphill climb, and we fought through it, and we outperformed everyone's expectations. Our campaign kept growing. You saw the exit poll showed that the majority of people who made up their mind at the end decided our way, and we felt that momentum, and we feel it here in New Hampshire, and we are very confident. And at the end, if you think about it, in Iowa, uh, you know, the winner, Ted Cruz, got eight delegates. We got seven. Donald Trump got seven. So we're basically just one delegate away here in the count, obviously just one state. But we're going to continue to work on it because I'm working to be the Republican nominee. And I'm confident that when all the delegates are counted up, we're going to have more than half of them and we'll be the nominee. All right. So we have a big controversy emerging. Uh, I call it the, the Carson Cruz Trump controversy as it relates to a rep news reports that came out on Iowa caucus day that said that that Ben Carson was not going to New Hampshire or South Carolina. He'd go to Florida for several days and then he'd go to Washington. And that got sent around by the Cruz campaign. And there was one report that even your campaign sent the news around and that some were saying, oh, Ben Carson's pulling out. What's your take on this? First of all, my campaign never sent that news around. That's false. And number no, two, not that he, the I news think Cruz that, has, I meant the news that, in fact, that was reported, not, yeah. not, not that he was right. getting out. Well, I think the fundamental, the, the deeper problem was that there were people on the ground in Iowa related to the Cruz campaign that were going around t telling people at caucus sites that Ben Carson was dropping out so in the hopes that they'd switch their vote. And uh, we heard it from a handful of people at some of the caucuses we went to as well. Uh, that, that they had been told that. And uh, Ted, I understand, has apologized for his campaign's involvement in that, and I understand Ben has accepted it, but he's still upset. Uh, I think, to me, it's an indication of a campaign that's willing to say or do anything in order to win, and it's troubling and unfortunate. I think Ben deserves more than that. He's worked very hard in this campaign. He's a fine gentleman and an upstanding person, and I thought he deserved better. But um, ultimately, you know, we'll continue to move forward here on our campaign. We feel good about the way things are going, but it's one of those unfortunate things that happens and an unfair thing, really. All right, let me, we began a discussion on radio that I'd like to bring to the TV airwaves tonight, uh, earlier today. So in 2010, you're the outsider, you're the insurgent candidate, you're the Tea Party favorite, and you win the election. You were supported by all the Tea Party, if I remember correctly. And the narrative right. on Monday night, caucus night, is that, oh, it looks like there will be a coalescing of the establishment around Marco Rubio. Now, the only issue that I really see the conservatives have had with you is on the issue of comprehensive immigration reform. I don't think you, in this insurgency year, want to be labeled establishment. Am I right about that? Yeah, well, it's not an accurate label. I reject all these labels. I, those are things that media comes up with because it makes it easier for them to cover the political news. Here's the facts. When I ran for the Senate in 2010, I ran against the leadership in the Republican Party in the Senate. We won. As you recall, Sean, you were, watched that very closely, that race. I was running against the sitting governor of Florida, and I was 50 point down in the polls. Even now that I'm running for president, it's the same establishment, people, many of the same people that have lined up against me. I've had over close to $40 million now from Jeb Bush's super PAC have attacked me. And I'm not complaining, I'm just pointing out the fact that that money did not come from the grassroots. Those are big multi-million dollar checks written by people in the establishment. They didn't want me to run. They stood in the way, they tried to stand in the way of me running this time. I referred to it on Monday night in Iowa, how they told me I needed to wait my turn. That being said, when I'm our nominee, I will unite the Republican Party. We can't win if we're not united. And not only united, but grow it. We have to take our conservative movement to millions of Americans that haven't voted for us, especially people struggling economically, because the political left, the liberals like Hillary Clinton and socialists like Bernie Sanders, have lied to struggling Americans, telling them big government is better for them. And look at the Obama economy. Record number of people on public assistance. Record number of people dropping out of the labor force. So I won't just unite the Republican Party, I will grow the conservative movement when I'm our nominee. Yeah, maybe, is it that they hate you less than Ted Cruz and Donald Trump, meaning the establishment? If they, in other words, you're saying they're throwing all this 
money at you. Um, why would I, I don't yeah. really fully understand why you say Jeb Bush's super PAC is spending all the money against you. Why do you think that is? I have no idea. You'll have to ask them why. And it's, you know, like anybody else. But I, I'm not complaining. Look, and you get into this race, people want to come after you. They have a right to do it under the First Amendment. The, the position you're in, you've got people on the top not wanting you to get to that top level. Then you've got people on the bottom that want to be where you are. And you seem to be getting hit from all sides. Let me, let me just play a little bit of the attacks that you've been experiencing. We know who the boy in the bubble is up here, who never answers your questions, who's constantly scripted and controlled because he can't answer your questions. So when Senator Rubio gets here, when the boy in the bubble gets here, I hope you guys ask him some questions. Marco made the decision, the conscious, deliberate decision, not only not to lead the fight against amnesty, but to go and stand with Barack Obama and Chuck Schumer and Harry Reid and to lead the fight for amnesty. I came in second, and people said, oh, that was a disappointing evening for Donald Trump. But Marco Rubio, good guy, by the way, came in third. And they're saying he had this unbelievable evening. And by the way, I came in second by a lot of votes, like over 2,000 votes. That's a lot of votes. Marco Rubio came in third place in a, in a, in a caucus state, and uh, we're all supposed to bow out. That is just absolutely absurd. I, I, I think you're in a tough spot. The top guys don't want you to get up, and the <laughs> no, bottom guys want to be where you yeah. are. That's, that's not exactly fun. Yeah, well, usually, you know, Sean, as you know, in politics, people don't waste time or money attacking you if you're not doing something well. And obviously, they, they, for whatever reason, for the most part, everybody except Donald there attacked me. And these are people that must feel like I'm a threat to their ambition to win. And that's fine. That means we're doing something right. Here's my point. If there is a policy difference with any of these people, we're going to talk about it because this is an important election and we can't elect someone to the White House that supported Sonia Sotomayor or someone that's trying to force Common Core on us or someone that will say or do anything to get elected. But we'll talk about the policy differences. But yeah. by and large, I am not in this to beat up on Republicans. I'm in this because I will beat Hillary Clinton. And the Democrats and Hillary know this. They don't want to run against me. They know that I am the strongest candidate against them because I can grow the conservative movement. And they don't want to run against me, but I can't wait to run against her. we got to get through this primary, and we will. And I'm confident that if I'm our nominee, we will beat Hillary Clinton, or for that matter, Bernie Sanders. And then we'll have a chance to undo the damage that this president continues to do to this country. All right. We only have about 20 seconds. How do you define success in New Hampshire? Well, that's an interesting question. I mean, for us, we just continue to work hard. I'm about to speak to about 400 people here in New Hampshire. We keep doing that in events for a day. And the bottom line is we want to get as many people to vote for us as possible, get as many delegates as we can in this process and move forward and, and go on to South Carolina and then Nevada and then the early states March 1st. I just keep working hard every day, trying to get as many people to vote for me. We'll see where that leads. Ultimately, elections, right. like everything in life, is in God's hands. So whatever God's will is, we'll accept, but we're going to work hard. All right, Senator, always appreciate your time. Thanks for being on with us. Thanks, Sean.